Hello and welcome to a brand new video. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to master traction within the F123 game and breaking it down into two easy to digest driving techniques for you at home. So, what are those two easy to digest driving techniques? Well, they are quite simply straight line traction and combined load traction. You might ask yourself at home, what is a straight line traction and what is a combined load traction? So, Corner 2 here at Austria is a great example of a straight line traction zone where you can come out of the corner and hold the wheel in a straight line and accelerate from the corner in quite an easy fashion to be honest. Whereas when we go to the middle sector of Austria that is a fantastic example of a combined load traction zone. Corner 3 is also a very good example of that as well where you're constantly turning but 5 and 6 is the best example of combined low traction on this on this track where you're on the power, on the power, on the power, still turning and you can see turning, turning, on the power, on the power, on the power and we're basically turning for 80-90% upwards of the traction zone. So we're first going to be covering the straight line traction and then we'll go into the combined low traction after that. So, when you're breaking it down, and we have to basically start at the very baseline knowledge and build it up from there, is to break it down in a simple numbers. When you are stopped and your car is not moving, hypothetically say that the weight of the car is 100% in the centre. Uh, of course, in a Formula 1 car, it's not exactly like this, uh, purely because the engine weighs more than the front wing, for example. So, and teams will never probably release publicly where exactly the weight distribution is but for this example let's say the weight is 100% in the middle of the car basically where the driver is you will have 25% of the weight per tire while you are stopped um, what means 25% of the grip on the front left 25% on the front right 25% on the rear left 25% on the rear right when you start accelerating Although the car is so stiff and so well engineered that you will not see pitch and roll that much in a Formula 1 car, if you look at an old muscle car from America, for example, you'll see like exactly drag races as well. When they accelerate, the front lifts up and you can see the rear really squats down. And that is effectively what's happening in a Formula 1 car, but because the suspension is so advanced and so good at keeping a mechanically flat platform, it does not move. But in physics of the car, when you accelerate, the weight will transition to the rear. So now let's break it down into simple numbers again. Um, when you start accelerating, hypothetically, coming now, we're starting to accelerate and building speed and momentum. Maybe when we've just accelerated, 70% of the rear weight is now on the rear tyres. And only front and only 30% of the weight is on the front tyres. So break that down again. So we're going to do that one more time. We start accelerating the car. And with the natural weight distribution, hypothetically, 30% of the weight is now on the front. And 70% is weight is now on the rear. The same applies for the braking. That when we start braking, 70% goes to the front and 30% stays on the rear. But that's for a different video, a different topic of braking technique. This video is exclusively for throttle technique. So what you have to imagine that every single time when you come out of a corner... You're coming up to the apex right now. The weight is on the front. The weight is on the front. And now we start accelerating. The weight is now rearward. The car's in a straight line. And the rear tyres have pretty much even distribution of weight over the rear axle. What means the grip is consistent and will allow you to drive forward out of the corner. Um, again, the weight of the car will very rarely be exactly the same on the rear. There will probably always be in a straight line traction 1-2% differences on the rear load simply just because it's very difficult to have a track that is exactly the flat, exactly the same grip load per tyre and for the steering wheel to be always in a straight line on the exit just because how racing cars and racing tracks naturally need to be to maximise lap time potential. So now to show a live demonstration of the straight line traction and how you can exploit it to your maximum potential. So coming up to the turn, braking as you normally would, down the gears, rotate the car, then straight line traction, hold the steering wheel in a straight line as possible. Of course we picked up a little bit of wheel spin there but to show it in replay camera and we'll go over it a few more times to get it really like embedded into your brain. So you can see coming up into the corner, straight line, 
turn the car and you can see we really focus on getting that wheel straight early as possible and we do pick up a little bit of wheel spin that's where you see a little jolt of the wheel um but effectively we tried our best to keep the wheel in a straight line as possible to maximize grip and potential and for a while you can do that on corner exits it will be always advantageous um, or at least 99.9% .9 of the time, it would be advantageous to be keeping the wheel in a straight line as possible, simply to put more even weight distribution over the rear tires and allow yourself to have a more even platform to generate grip, performance, and confidence on the exit of the corner. So one more time, now get the car slowed down under the braking zone, and now turn the car, straight line the steering wheel, and now you can see very consistent on the traction. And I'm gonna show you what not to do, basically. because I think that's also very important to cover. And I'm gonna hold the wheel turned in the straight line, what should be a straight line braking zone, hold the wheel turned slightly, and you can see when I tried to get on the power in the same place, in the same fashion, in a very cautious manner, even I should say, we still had that snap of wheel spin, simply because we were still turning at this point, and as we try to get on the power, yes, we're slightly on the curb and that will reduce the grip a little bit. But the overriding factor is simply that the steering wheel was turned and that is what caused the grip loss and instability of the car. And this is why a core foundation, why some corners, like corner two at Austria, you can be very aggressive on the throttle, whereas middle sector corners like five and six, even turn three here at Austria, is a great example why you have to be cautious, because you are turning while getting on the power. You can see the steering wheel is basically always turned while getting on the power. So now to break down the combined load traction of the car and how that looks and how that will perceive itself in the car weight distribution, is we're going to be parked right in the middle here of the apex and this would be generally where you're starting to hammer the throttle trying to get back on the power as hard as you can on the exit here and the rear tires be screaming for the grip so hypothetically while you're now going through this corner and let's break it down into very simple numbers once again so to go over it when the car is stopped like this and there's a straight line, you have 25, 25, 25, and 25 grip for each tyre compound on the surface track. Uh, with the contact patch of the track, I should say. Whereas now, when I'm turning, and imagine I'm turning at full speed, going around the corner at 150 miles an hour, turning left, the majority of the weight is now put to the outside tyre. And especially while we're on the throttle, even more of that weight is being put to the rear right hand side of the tyre. So breaking it down into very simple, easy numbers to digest at home, of course, these are not actually reflecting what the car load is having and the grip load is doing. Uh, but breaking it down so you can imagine it at home as well. So we're turning left. Imagine 150 miles an hour, hard left right now, back on the throttle. So the front left will have 10% grip. Um... Rear left will have 10% grip, front right will have 30% grip. So now we have a combined amount of 50% grip is being taken up by three tires. The rest of that 50% grip is being used by that rear right tire. So that means that there's so much grip and load and potential on that rear right tire, but equally so little on that rear left tire, what means it's quite easy to get to this phase of the corner here while the rear right is so loaded up, you're pushing the power, pushing the power, pushing the power, and for the tire just to snap and spin out as we get to the end phase of the corner. Equally, the same as here, that you get to the end of the corner and you always find yourself spinning out in those very end fractional moments of the apex. And the reason for that is, is that you're coming to the end of the corner and you'll see often, even I've experienced it myself, when you get to this phase, this phase of the corner, especially on Austria, the rear tyres are so hot, so worn, losing grip, that that rear left tyre, like I say, in hypothetical numbers, has 10% of the grip, whereas the rear right will have 50% of the grip. What means that the higher the grip threshold is in a very basic understanding to understand manner, is that tire will snap so easily and working with the differential, and I've explained the differential in previous videos, so please refer to those as well. Um, but to go into a very simple amount here that when the differential is fully locked at 100%, both rear tyres will have the same grip, um, whereas the differential locked at 
the rear tires can spin at an independent grip uh well speed ratio and generate independent amount of grips and that's why it's so powerful in many examples uh but to keep it simple and basic here is when you're coming around the end of the corner and that rear left is so heavily loaded so much loaded so much loaded and it will just snap and go away from you because it's so loaded and that sliding effect can become so easy to override that grip that it was having a few milliseconds ago and that is why you have so easy ability to lose the car in the final part of the the throttle zone in the traction zone in combined loaded corners so what you have to do to counter that is you have to do this basically i'm going to show you a replay of this and we're going to approach the corner at relatively good speed up into fifth gear like we would be and you have to really be careful on the power and apply the throttle oh so slowly so what's my throttle bar on the bottom right hand side um on the middle right hand side i should say you can see i'm only really getting to full power by the time i'm on the exit of the corner before i get to the exit of the corner i'm never really touching full power and that allows me that ability to keep control in the car. Because once, basically, once you go to 100% power, you're committed. You're 100% committed for the end of that traction zone. Um, and for that, you have to be able to stay committed into power. While you are not at 100% power and generally anywhere below 90% power, it allows you that fluctuation, the ability to modulate the power going towards the end of the apex and to control the throttle there as well so going through the example one more time for you at home you can see approaching the corner now at full speed and now applying the power smoothly understanding that the rear right is going to be so much weighted and now applying the throttle very smoothly and only getting back to 100 percent power by the time we get to the end of the corner and that is so important to remember that while you're in a straight line traction zone like turn two at austria you have much more grip potential and stability is the key word whereas when you're on a combined load corner that rear right in this example where we're turning left is going to be so heavily loaded that when you get to the end of the corner phase you can see it here actually this is a very beautiful demonstration of it that while we're turning into the apex you can see how much of the weight is over the right hand side of the tire and the car i should say and you can see as we come into the end of the tracking zone now it releases now the weight distribution is back to equal and now you can get back to full power but while the car is leaning over and putting so much weight on that rear right tire it can become very dangerous to slam the throttle down and that is what causes unpredictable snap to oversteer and that is what ultimately will cost you the ability to keep the car controlled stable and probably will end up with you in the barrier like i have been many times in my career as well so that is the basics to understanding uh traction in a formula one car and the formula one game as well and to summarize it in a straight line traction, the rate distribution is on a very equal platform for the rear compound tyres and will allow you to be on the throttle much more consistently. While you're turning, you have to be way more progressive to compensate the fact that the weight distribution is unequal on the rear axle of the car and that will allow you to be more consistent, more stable and to keep you more modulation in the throttle as well because of that. So, if you found this video helpful, comment below what you uh what you are improving on what you'd like to see as well for the next video because i want really to push this channel to to help you give you my advice and give you my coaching that i've learned from my career as well so like i say if you found this video helpful be sure to like and subscribe and i'll catch you in the next video glad to be ciao ciao bye bye